good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Mary and Orr. I'm the Fred Lippitt Professor of Public Policy and a director of the Taubman Center for Public Policy and American Institutions here at Brown. I would like to welcome all of you to the Taubman Center's annual Thomas Anton and Fred Lippitt uh, Conference. Uh, this conference was established in uh, 2000 uh, to inform the community about urban affairs issues. Uh, the, the object here is to bring together academics, practitioners, and citizens for in-depth discussions about issues facing America's urban uh, communities. Um, this event was established, as I said, in 2000 in honor of two people, uh, Tom uh, Anton and Fred uh, Lippitt. Um, Tom was the founding uh, director of the Taubman Center. Uh, he served as director from 1984 to 2000. And Tom was responsible for setting up the center's undergraduate program and establishing a wide variety of other activities in, in the center. Uh, Tom uh, passed away some uh, few years uh, ago. It's an honor to sort of serve as director following uh, uh, Tom's leadership. Uh, Fred Lippitt uh, was a longtime public servant here in Rhode Island. He was a state legislator. He served as a state administrator. Uh, he was a candidate for mayor, uh, I think a couple of times, uh, unsuccessful candidate, I should say. Uh, and he was very involved in the formation of the Providence Plan, which is a very important and very active nonprofit uh, organization here in Providence that does a lot of things with the city of Providence and indeed in urban communities throughout, uh, throughout the state. Uh, Fred was also uh, Fred Lippitt was also a great friend of, of Brown and a tremendous friend of the Taubman Center. Several of our programs are funded by uh, 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 resources that Fred uh, provided. So in their honor, will you please just join me in just applauding uh, this uh, conference in the memory of Tom Anton and Fred Lippitt. <laughs> Uh, this year's uh, Anton Lippitt Conference focuses on municipal pension reform. Uh, many cities and towns across the country have millions of dollars in unfunded pension liabilities for firefighters, police officers, and other municipal workers. Uh, some estimate that for cities, the unfunded pension liability uh, stands at about seven trillion dollars. That's with a T, trillion, trillion dollars. Uh, pension funding is a long-term endeavor, but local governments often have annual balance budget requirements that can put uh, government contributions to pension plans against other, uh, other pressing uh, budgetary uh, needs. Uh, the GAO, for example, recently concluded that the recent economic downturn resulted in local pensions uh, suffering significant uh, investment uh, losses. Uh, and these challenges have engendered calls around the country, indeed, for, for pension reform. Indeed, a June 2012 Time Magazine article was entitled, quote, Why We Need a Pension Reform. And in this state, uh, Rhode Island, we have uh, been discussing and dealing with pension reform issues uh, for several years now. And many of you probably know that uh, our state made national news uh, when it was able to put together what some people call a quite ambitious a state level effort to reform the pension system at the uh, state level. Uh, but there are 39 uh, cities and towns here in Rhode Island, and uh, many of them uh, face uh, similar challenges as relate to the unfunded pension liability as we're seeing in California and across, and across the country. 
And so we at the Tarvin Center wanted to stop and take pause and have a really enriched, hopefully enriched discussion about municipal pension reform. And what we decided to do at the center is to have two panels today. Uh, one panel, the first panel in fact, will address this issue of municipal pension reform from a national perspective. As I indicated, this is an issue that not only confronts us here in Rhode Island, but indeed across the nation. And so we wanted to bring here to Brown uh, some uh, policy experts, some folk who have really spent their time looking deeply into this issue from across communities, across states, indeed a national perspective. So our first panel uh, that will precede my introduction here will, will come first and talk about this issue, if you will, from a national uh, perspective. And what we always like to do here at the Taubman Center when we have the Anton Lippitt Conference, we like to try to connect the issue of something that's going on here in our state. And as I said, this is something we've been discussing and grappling with for a number of years. And so the second panel will, will include folk who have really been dealing with this here on the local and state level. So we have a couple of public officials, I'm sorry, three public officials who will, 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 will speak to this matter, and we have some policy experts who, who spend their, uh, their days and perhaps their nights and weekends uh, thinking about uh, the unfunded pension liability here in, in Rhode Island. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, it's an ambitious but I think worthwhile uh, a task uh, when we have a couple hours or so to sort of get through this ambitious agenda. So without further ado, let me call up my distinguished colleague, uh, Terry Devine, who is a lecturer of public policy here and an economist by training, who is going to help moderate, moderate this first panel of distinguished uh, experts from the national perspective as relates to municipal pension reform. Dr. Devine, please. Welcome. Uh, it is, um, well, it really is uh, a pleasure to take part in this event. Uh, when Marion sent me the email asking me if I'd be the moderator, I wasn't sure if it was because uh, I, I'm a labor economist or because I've actually spent 15 years in the public sector and in a few years we'll be collecting a public sector pension. Um, so uh, on that note, um, but we have, um, we have three <coughs> Uh, three excellent speakers here uh, to give us the perspective from economics, all right? Our first is Robert Clark. Robert is a, the Zelnack Professor of Economics and, and uh, Professor of Management, Innovation and Entrepreneurship at North Carolina State University. He's a research associate uh, of the National Bureau of Economic Research. He's written or edited many books uh, and papers on pension plans of all sorts. Um, pub public and private, pension regulations, retiree health plans, social security, and retirement decision making. Uh, his work has dealt with private and public sector policies, both in the U.S. and abroad, uh, particularly Ch um, Japan, excuse me. Professor Clark is a member of the Pension Research Council, a fellow of the Employee Benefit Research Institute, a fellow of the TIA CREF Institute, and a member of the National Academy of Social Insurance. Uh, Professor Clark chaired the 2003 Technical Panel on Assumptions and Methods that was appointed by the U.S. Social Security Administration <laughs> to review and evaluate old age survivors and disability, the old age survivors and disability insurance program. He also chaired a study Commission on the Future of North Carolina State Retirement Plans. Professor Clark earned a BA from Millsaps College and a PhD in economics from Duke. He, today he will speak to us about the history of uh, public sector pensions in the US. Okay, so that is our first speaker. I'm gonna tell you about all three first and then we can get rolling. Um, Joshua Rao is here. He is a professor of finance at Stanford, the Stanford School of Business. 
Professor Rao has also published many academic uh, articles on pensions. What has gotten perhaps the most attention has been his work on estimating state pension liabilities, assets, and unfi unfunded liabilities as compared to state gross products and uh, using alternative assumptions about discount rates. Um, and uh, he will talk about this work today. Uh, Professor Rao has received uh, academic recognition for this work. He was awarded the 2006 Brattle Prize for outstanding research paper on corporate finance published uh, in the Journal of Finance for his paper, Investment in Financing Constraints, Evidence from the Funding of Corporate Pension Plans and the 2011 Smith Breeden Prize for Outstanding Research Paper on Capital Markets, published in the Journal of Finance, for his paper, Public Pension Promises, How Big Are They and What Are They Worth, uh, which he co-authored uh, co with Robert Novi Mars. Professor Rao has a gift for making the arcane accessible and contributes regularly to The Economist magazine, The New York Times, and, and elsewhere. He has a bachelor's degree in economics from Yale a and a PhD in economics from MIT. Before arriving at Stanford, he taught at the University of Chicago and Northwestern University. So he comes well informed. Uh, last but certainly not least is Eileen Norcrest, uh, Norcrest, Norcross. Excuse me. Um, she is a senior research fellow with the Mercatus Center at George Mason University. In this position, she serves as lead researcher on the Mercatus Center's state and local policy project. Her primary research interests include fiscal federalism and in institutions, state and local governments, and economic de development. She has studied the Rhode Island public sector pension plan, uh, pan excuse me, Rhode Island public sector pensions in particular, and she'll speak about that work today. Ms. Norcrass is also interested in the impact of technology on social, social change. Consistent with this interest in tech, she blogs regularly, and she is the co-founder of the website stimuluswatch.org. Ms. Norcrest has testified before Congress on many topics and had many pieces appear in the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, and many other publications. Before joining the Mercatus Center, Ms. Norcross was the 2001-2002 Warren Brooks Fellow in Journalism at the Competitive Enterprise Institute in Washington, D.C. She was a consultant at KPMG and a research analyst at Thompson Financial Securities Data. Ms. Norcross has a bachelor's degree in economics and uh, history, uh, in economics and history from Rutgers and a master's degree in economics also from Rus Rutgers. And she notes in her bio on her website that she hails from New Jersey. Okay. Um, and uh, so that is our distinguished panel of speakers. <laughs> All right. uh, so without further ado, um, I, welcome, um, uh, I welcome Professor Clark. Thank you.